Hello, hello, hello. This is Nicholas on this lovely Tuesday afternoon wanting to know the value of I factorial. Uh, and also a sub-question is do you factorial? Because I factorial. Anyways, um, this might seem totally nonsensical at first, you know. Normally you talk about a factorial and you talk about it meaning how many ways you can arrange a certain number of things in a row. Now, uh, when you talk about I factorial, and of course I being the square root of minus one, uh, you have to analytically continue the factorial function. See, the when we're talking about n factorial, we mean n being a natural number, which, unless you're in IB, <laughs> the natural numbers start at one, not zero. But anyway, um, that's just a, a, a gripe that I have with IB. Um, the International Baccalaureate Program. Now, uh, it turns out, though, that for any complex number z, z factorial uh, t becomes the integral from 0 to infinity of, say, t to the z is usually what we write, e to the negative t dt. So this is what's known as the gamma function. All right, so this is, gamma of z and uh, really i should have said that um this would be really gamma of of uh, z plus one um see in other words there's it's really a minus one right here and we plugged in z plus one to just get a z so it turns out that that um gamma of z plus one is equal to z factorial in other words that's how we define it so and you can actually plug in some values of z to, to, to see this for yourself. So, for example, the integral from 0 to infinity of, let's say, let's let, uh, okay, well, see, I want to write this a little better here. This is really up here. It's I, We plugged in z plus 1 minus 1. Now, let's let... Um, z being equal to... There's, so there's a built-in minus 1 right here in the formula. Now, let's let z be equal to 1. In other words, we want to find gamma of 2 as an example here. So if we want to find gamma of 2, now, uh, that would be t to the 2... It would be t to the 1 plus 1 minus 1. So just be t to the 1 t e to the negative t dt. I want to evaluate that integral. A boss, Jane, is messaging me. Hi, a boss. Um, so this is a pretty standard integral through integration by parts. d i plus minus plus. So t 1 0 e to the minus t m minus e to the minus t and then e to the minus t when we do that integration. Now, um, that means our answer becomes the integral, or no, no integral anymore, t minus t e to the minus t from 0 to infinity minus e to the minus t from 0 to infinity. So since those are both from the same bounds, I'm going to write that as minus t e to the minus t minus e to the minus t from 0 to infinity. Evaluate all of it from 0 to infinity instead. Okay. And now also, since this negative sign is just looking to bite me, I'm going to write this as minus t e to the minus t plus e to the t, e to the minus t <laughs> from 0 to infinity. So I'll just slap a negative sign on what I get on the inside here. Now, okay. So when uh, t is infinity, in other words, we're going to let... Uh, we, we wouldn't really let it be infinity, you know, we'd, we technically we would write, like, this would be A, for example, and then we'd write the limit as A goes to infinity. But, I mean, just plug in infinity, really. Um, so, we get uh, infinity, we get, basically, we're talking about now the limit as T approaches infinity of T e to the minus T, which is the limit as T approaches infinity of T over e to the T. Now, uh, this is technically um, infinity over infinity type 
situation, but realize that um, e to the t gr grows much quicker than t, and so the denominator is going to outpace the numerator, and this limit is going to just become zero. And now you could show that a bit more formally with L'Hopital's rule. So we get negative of zero plus, now, e to the minus t at infinity, that's one over e to the positive infinity, uh, which is zero again. So we get another zero here. Now minus t e to the minus t at t equals zero is still zero. Minus t e, or I'm sorry, uh, minus, uh, what, uh, <laughs> it would be a plus right here. The, the, oh, okay. E to the negative t at t equals zero. That's e to the negative zero, which is a one. So uh, we get just minus minus one, which is one. Good, the negative signs didn't bite me. So what does that tell us? This is gamma of 2, right? So gamma of 2 is 2 minus 1 factorial, or 1 factorial, which is 1. Now that's just an example calculation, and uh, every one would, would, for integer values, be done much the same way. Um, you know, you'd just be basically doing integration by parts, and you just have to differentiate this t so many times. Now. Uh, let's talk about, though, instead, let's talk about I factorial. So I factorial, by definition, oops, of the gamma function would be the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the I e to the negative t dt. And uh, realize that t to the I, see, I want to change t to e. I want to I want to base e so that I can combine these. t to the i is really e to the natural log of t to the i because t is e to the natural log of t, which is e to the i ln t. Now, um, e to the i ln t it could also be written as cosine of natural log of t plus i sine natural log of t, okay? Now, so what I can do is I can write this as um, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the uh, negative t cosine of um, natural log of t dt plus i, because i is a constant, so I can bring it out front, i times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t sine of natural log of t dt. Now, it does turn out, unfortunately, <laughs> um, that this integral here um, cannot be done. Uh, it doesn't have an elementary antiderivative. Now, uh, that is unfortunate because now what we essentially have to do is, you know, estimate this using... Um, Ramon sums or things like this. Usually Simpson's rule is used here. Um, but in any case, we're, we're going to get approximately uh, 0.4980156. I have this value committed to my head. Minus 0.1549498i. Of course, that is a very important mathematical concept, and uh, you should commit it to your memory as well. Now, so that means that uh, there is 0... 0.4980156 minus 0.154948i ways to arrange i factorial things. No, uh, <laughs> the factorial loses its uh, practical interpretation for non-integer numbers. You know, for example, you, you can also um, evaluate, for example, a one-half factorial, a fractional factorial. That would be a challenge for you to evaluate one-half factorial. Right, because that comes down to evaluating the integral from zero to infinity of t to the one half e to the minus t dt, which does become a little bit more tricky with integration by parts because uh, it's you know you have a power here. You're going to be doing integration by parts with differentiating t to the one half, and um, that's not an integer positive integer, so it's not like you're going to get a derivative of zero right here. But I mean, it, it's very easily done. It's actually a pretty cool integral to do. Now, um, 
it does require knowledge of the standard integral that uh, the integral from zero to infinity of uh, it would be e to the negative t squared dt is square root pi over two. Now, um, and I have a video on that using the Jacobian matrix if you want to check that out. But I would I would leave one half factorial or any fractional factorial as a challenge for you all. Um, once you establish one half factorial, the rest of them do kind of fall into place. Anyways, um, I thought it's kind of cool that you can you can in fact compute the factorial value using the analytically extended gamma function for any complex number. And I think that's pretty cool. Of course, you know, it kind of loses interpretation uh, for non-natural numbers, but uh, for natural numbers, it aligns with the factorial function. So anyways, um, I believe with that, we're done.